Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update, recording this on the morning of Saturday, July 29th. Uh, before we jump in, a couple of announcements. Uh, number one, I'm, I'm working on my trade plan for the month of August. And I mentioned uh, to, to when I was on the uh, Zero DTE live streams that I'll be putting that out here in the next couple of days, obviously ending coming towards the end of July. Uh, so I'll be working on that the rest of this weekend and Monday. And so probably on Monday or Tuesday, I'll be, I'll be putting that out. Still got, still got a little work to do, uh, but, I'll, but it'll be a little bit more in detail than the normal. So not only will I be putting out the zero DTE trade plan that I'll be doing, but also the other uh, for, for a lot of the other positions that we trade. So look forward to that in the coming days. And then the second announcement is, uh, mark your calendars and you'll, and we'll be sending out more details about this. Uh, but on August 10th, so that's Thursday, August 10th at 3 30 PM central. So 30 minutes after the market closes, uh, I'll be doing a new web class and it's on a strategy that I like to call the time fly. So, uh, mark your calendars, 3 30 PM central Thursday, the 10th. Uh, I'll be getting out more information on that, but just want to make sure you get that down. All right. So let's jump into the markets and then we'll take a look at all of our trades and positions for the week, uh, starting with the S and P. So let's go to the ES futures. So, um, you know, decent sized swings, but really just back and forth action. Um, here's Monday and we, we ended up a little bit higher in the S and P obviously Wednesday was FOMC day, uh, really fairly muted for FMC. The big, the big move actually came the next day. It looked like we were ripping higher than some news from the bank of Japan came out and got, cr and we got crushed moving lower. Uh, I really expected a continuation to the downside, at least a little bit off that move, but not so much. Friday was a big bounce back and, uh, and back up, you know, closed at, you know, recent highs here. If we zoom out a little bit, I'm going to go to SPX, you know, at the beginning of the year, I marked the charts with the expected move for the year. And I must have accidentally deleted my line for the upper expected move, but you know, here's the lower end, and my anticipation is we would be getting closer to that than to the upside. And well, obviously that was wrong. Uh, so we've pushed up the. I would say the upper. Uh, I had my line right under this text, so somewhere around here, you know, forty six eighty ish area. We're we're at forty five eighty right now. So we're literally a hundred points away in the SPX from the upside expected move which is the one standard deviation move on January 1st, 2023. So obviously pretty bullish if we look at that on a year-to-date um, percentage basis. S&P is up almost 20%. NASDAQ is up 45% year-to-date. And the Russell is up 13%. Uh, and if we want to throw in... Dow as well, just to take a look at that, which has been strong recently, but it's only up 7% year to date. So pretty, pretty strong stuff, uh, overall this year. Uh, but back to this week. So looking at the NASDAQ kind of similar price action, a little bit choppy and then push up on Friday, the Russell, same thing. And the Dow, uh, pretty similar stuff. Gold and silver. Well, gold had a big pop and then it came down, um, and then it bounced back on Friday, uh, similar to silver, silver a little bit weaker. Uh, notes and bonds had a little bit of a flush down after FO, the day after FOMC, a little bounce back on Friday, uh, putting the 10-year yield at 3.9, 3.95, so just under that 4% uh, that level. Oil, strong, natty gas, weak. Uh, the grains, which have been moving, soybeans lower for the week, wheat lower for the week after going limit up last week, uh, and then corn down as well. The euro and the pound lower, although they got a little bit of a bounce on Friday, and Bitcoin still hovering under that $30,000 level. Uh, it's been kind of chopping around for the last several weeks. All right, let's jump into our trades for the week, starting with zero DTE, zero DTE. So for all my zero DTE trades, 
ended up booking a little over 19,000 bucks for the week, a 68% win rate on 16 total trades. If we break those down by the different strategies, uh, let's see, AM ratio just had one trade that was on Monday, booked uh, about 2,400 on that one. On the zero DTE ducks. Oh yeah, didn't have any. Did I? Is that right? I, thought, I was thinking I had one. I know I tried to get filled. Yeah, no, no ducks. And then um, FOMC Iron Condor had. We did one of those, obviously with FOMC. Booked a little over eleven hundred on that. And then on the reverse iron condor uh, during FO, uh, on FOMC day, I, the main one I took here booked 1700 I went in again with some smaller size, closed out two of three for a nice profit, and then the last contract came back into my valley and expired at max loss. I ended up net-net losing 425 on that one. Um, on... Power hour ratio trades took one of those and it was basically a scratch plus 60. And then on the other ones, and I've, I've started breaking these down by tranche one and tranche two. Um, so, uh, so those all, all of these this week were broken down by tranche one and tranche two. So a little over $9,000 in power hour this week. Uh, if we look at, so Monday, Tranche one was a winner, 4,200. And tranche two was a loser, minus 2,300. Okay, so net net winner on Monday. On Tuesday, uh, tranche one was a loser, minus 3,000, but tranche two was a winner of 4,600. So net winner on Tuesday. Wednesday did not trade it due to FOMC. Thursday was a little bit of a net loser, about 300 bucks. Tranche one was a winner. Tranche two was a loser. And then on Friday, a uh, nice winner. Tranche one uh, booked over 7,700. Tranche two lost about 2,000. So net $9,000 on power hour for the week. Uh, let me see here. I don't think I had any of Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This was a, a Tuesday morning iron condor, uh, ended up closing out at profit on half of it and then got stopped out on the, or, or no, I actually got stopped out for the full amount on a for a small profit 360. And then on the reverse iron condors had two of those, uh, both winners. This one was a really nice winner. Um, day after FOMC, obviously with that big down move, Got out of uh, four of my five contracts for a 30% profit, left left the last one as a runner. So booked over 3,500 on that one. And then uh, yesterday, Friday, uh, got out of four of five at a 30% uh, profit. And then I basically scratched the fifth one. So booked a little over 1,400. So almost $5,000 on good old Uncle Rick for the week. And that is it for zero DTE. Uh, no dynamic butterfly trades, but um, we do have one position on in rut, that long duration one. And, and again, we'll, we'll continue to do some longer duration ones. But once I do the class that I just mentioned on Thursday, the time fly, uh, that'll be a, a very a pretty active strategy around butterflies. So look forward to that. Um, and then next category is dynamic calendars. Get all these clicked. Make sure we got them all covered. <clears throat> Give it a little refresh. So slightly green on calendars for the week. Took a $1,200 loss on a TGIF and a $1,300 loss on a 3-4. This is one that I entered on Monday because I didn't get in on Friday for the 6-7 because I couldn't access TOS where I was. So I ended up jumping in on Monday with a 3-4, which in and itself, you know, tests well, but a loser this week. Uh, I had a really a couple really nice B&Bs, one for over $1,200, one for over $1,400. And that one I actually 
closed out the same day. That was the day before FOMC and another $300 winner. Uh, trades open on the calendars right now. We've got a TGIF, a 6-7, and a 3-5. Uh, that single, that's that's just a, uh, a oh, that that's the NDX, yeah. All right, so let's take a look at those. So in, let's go to NDX first. We've got that single calendar, which is a put calendar, which is actually slightly diagonalized. I moved the short put back one strike, but it's pretty centered. Got a little bit of profit. Uh, as stated in the in the trade on this one, we'll either try to book 20%, or if it moves towards one of our break-evens, we'll add a double and, and adjust that. On SPX, we've got the TGIF, which uh, which is doing well. It's up. Um, it's already up over over two thousand dollars. And then we've got a six seven, which will take off at one DTE or start scaling out at twenty percent profit. Just put that on Friday afternoon, so still. Uh, centered and then same with our three five we'll take this one off first thing monday morning kind of a weekend b and b and then on to iron ducks we opened a duck and then we let one of our ducks expire for beak profit Uh, sorry, two expired for Beak Profit. So one expired in, in RUT, one expired in SPX, and then we opened a new one in RUT. So let's go take a look at those. So here's the one that we have open in RUT. Price is hanging out right here, so not much to do on that. SPX. Got this one here, price is hanging out right there, and that's an eight eight expiration. So if we get some down move, we'll uh we'll add some more ducks. Would like to get one on in QQQ, but just we got we just got the two right now, one in SPX, one in RUT. NTT. A little bit of a red week for my NTT trades. Uh, down 1900 for the week. So closed a loss in Natty Gas, minus 600. Closed a gold counter trend by the dip in uh, gold for minus 700. Uh, and closed a British pound for 967. Uh, have booked some profits on my EEM trade, but it's still open. And then I'm also long the Russell and short Disney. And then options selling and hedgehogs. Uh, just had one closed trade. Oops. Just had one closed trade, and it was a small scratch loss on a hedgehog in IWM. And the rest of these trades are open. So let's go to the platform. I'll show you all the open positions. Starting with the euro, we've got a ratioed short strangle which we've rolled down the calls on. Price is still well within range, uh, down a little bit on that one. In oil, we've got a couple positions. We've got a hedgehog and we've got a short strangle. Here's our hog. We're up a little bit of money on that. And that has an 817 expiration. And then our short strangle, which we've rolled puts up on, but we're down on a little bit. Price is hanging out right here. Still well within range. Uh, could use a little bit of down move in CL to get back to center. In ES, we've got two different hedgehogs. Price is hanging out right here on this one. And that has a August 10th expiration. And then this one here is our most recent one. Has an August 24 expiration. Uh, price is hanging out right there. Uh, gold, we put on a new reverse hedgehog in gold this week. So not much to do on that. 
And then MES, we've got a couple of short strangles. This one price is hanging out up here in the upper end of its range. And we've rolled puts up on that so far. And then this one we have not adjusted and price is hanging out right there. Not much profit or loss on that yet. Uh, ZS, we were really close to taking this one off uh, for a quick 30% profit, uh, but it kind of moved down on us a little bit. So we're holding, if, if we get a little bit of a bump towards center on that one into next week, we will be able to close that and book profits. Apple, we've got a hedgehog. It's got an 811 expiration. IWM, we've got a hedgehog. It's got a August 25 expiration. QQQ, we've got a hog. It's got a an 8.5 expiration. I looked at taking this off on Friday, decided to hold it through the weekend after that big rally we had. So we'll, we'll take that off on Monday when it has four days to expiration. If we get a little bit of a pop, we'll be able to, you know, price just scratch out a profit on that one. And then Rut and SPX showed you the ducks there. So that's it, my friends. Uh, that's all for the trades. That's all for the market. That's all for your update. Have a good rest of your weekend. Talk to you soon.